Hello, Miami University and all Oxford community. I'm Andrew. And I'm Andy, your co-host for tonight's show. Welcome back to Miami Television News. Sylvester Stallone has been spotted in Oxford filming a new movie, Alarum, with star Scott Eastwood. Several Miami University students and Oxford locals have had the opportunity to watch the filming take place in locations such as High Street, Houston Woods. Several Miami students have also gotten a chance to get on set as production assistants as well. Oxford, Ohio had its Hollywood moment as Sylvester Stallone and Scott Eastwood spent a few weeks in Oxford filming their upcoming crime thriller, Alarum. The film secured $5.9 million in tax credits simply for filming in Ohio. Alarum is about two rogue spies who have gone off grid to settle down as husband and wife. Their honeymoon is abruptly interrupted by a band of international spy organizations in search of a suspicious stolen hard drive. Stallone is best known for his iconic portrayal of Rocky in the American sports drama Rocky franchise. Eastwood is an American actor who starred in many of his father, Clint Eastwood's, films. In the past week, the crew of Alarum has been spotted filming in locations such as Houston Woods before filming near a high street. Word spread quickly, and on February 27th, a large crowd of students and Oxford locals gathered on High Street to watch filming in front of O-Pub. Although the actors were mostly filming inside, the city of Oxford closed numerous parking lots and streets to accommodate the filming. Local establishments such as Blue Mango and O-Pub closed periodically, while other businesses such as LCNB Bank experienced just minor delays. In the weeks leading up to filming, the city of Oxford worked closely with the production team to ensure disruption was minimal and the public stayed safe. The Oxford Fire Department was notified that explosions were being filmed. There was a high number of police presence at all filming locations to ensure the safety of the crowd and crew. Witnesses of the filming uptown saw scenes including a man falling out of a window and a few explosions. Locals who found the set in Houston Woods saw a fake plane crash out in the woods as well as a truck full of fake AK-47s in the parking lot. Filming in Oxford was completed on March 2nd. Today at 7 p.m., Miami University is hosting the final Republican U.S. primary debate in Ohio. You can watch candidates Matt Dolan, Frank LaRose, and Bernie Moreno speak their stances on important issues. Hosting this debate reflects Miami's values and fostering spaces to talk about public issues and encourage debate. The debate will be held in the Gates Abaglen Theater and the Center for Performing Arts. To watch live in the theater, tickets are required. However, the five-hour-long debate will be live-streamed on WLWT.com and the WLWT channel. Congratulations to the Miami synchronized skating team who won big at the national championships. Miami won their third consecutive gold medal and broke the national collegiate record, which they had set themselves in 2022. The senior team won bronze as well. Congrats, Red Hawks. And now it's time for the sports update with Andrew. Thanks, Andy. Miami baseball and softball were both busy this weekend as they both had weekend sets against their respective teams. For Miami baseball, the Red Hawks opened up the weekend against the visiting Oakland Golden Grizzlies from the Horizon League. Miami ended up sweeping the Golden Grizzlies in emphatic fashion during the team's home opening series. Game one, Miami would end up winning 21-7 over Oakland. During the first game, it was the Ryland Zaborowski show. He ended up hitting two homers to top off a five RBI day from the plate. Zaborowski was one of many Red Hawks to total 22 Miami hits. The Red Hawks would play a closer game, but they would end up winning 8-6 to six over the Golden Grizzlies in game two. The catcher, David Novak, was the hottest Red Hawks bat. He finished two for four with three RBIs and a two-run homer in the fifth. The final game of the weekend for Miami, the Red Hawks would keep up the hot offensive weekend from the plate and outslug the Golden Grizzlies 17-9 in an offensive showdown. This game was characterized by freshman Garrison Burreal, who ended up getting his first collegiate hit in the second inning. Miami's next matchup will be against the Wright State Raiders from the Horizon League. That game is currently underway from Dayton and should continue to stay entertaining. Miami softball, meanwhile, continued their weekend trip out to Norman, Oklahoma, and ended up going 4-1 during a five-game weekend tournament. 
Game one, this was probably the best of the weekend. The Red Hawks took on the number one team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, who were defending national champions. This game went down to the wire thanks to back-to-back -back solo shots from Jenna Golombowski and Carly Spade, which would tie up the game 7-7 in the seventh. The Sooners would quickly walk it off in the bottom of the seventh with a two-run game-winning homer to give Oklahoma a 9-7 win over Miami and stay undefeated. The next four games, the Red Hawks would defeat Louisiana 12-10, Seattle 10-2, Missouri, Kansas City 16-6 in five, and Tulsa 8-0 in five. Holly Blaska, Chloe Parks, and Kate Kobayashi, as well as Madison, Madeline Reeves, each were very strong for the red and white. The Red Hawks' next matchup will be against Jacksonville State, in the first game of a weekend tournament in Athens, Georgia. First pitch is slated for this Friday at 1 p.m. Many students might be aware of the issues with the student body presidential election, but here's a quick recap on what's happened. On February 20th, Will Brindley and Babs Dyer were announced as the new student body president after running unopposed. Patrick Houlihan and Spencer Manzak met with Miami's Associated Student Government's Judicial Council on February 23rd and made the argument that due to miscommunication about deadlines, they should be considered for the ballot. The two groups will now run against each other for the 2024 student body president election, taking place March 18th through the 20th. MTN will continue to work to update students about the status of the election. Pallet Jack, with recent performances at Church Street Social, the band has been making waves in the headlines. MTN had the opportunity to sit down and interview this rising cover band to learn more. Hello, Miami University and all Oxford community. My name is Reed Mann with Miami Television News, and today this I'm here so with fun. Miami's very own punk rock band, Pallet Jack. I'm Carson, I play bass and I sing for Pilot Jack. I'm Trevor, I play drums and I do sound for Pilot Jack. I'm Hayden, I play guitar and occasionally backing vocals. So today we're going to be doing an interview for them and their band. So getting into the first question, how was Pilot Jack formed? Well, we were playing with other people at first. It's kind of a long story, <laughs> actually. We were playing with another bassist and a saxophone player and I was playing guitar and singing, and Hayden was also playing guitar, and Trevor was playing drums. And they quit on the same day, <laughs> separately from each other. Nice. And I remember being so stressed out, and I came to these guys, and, and I, we were all like, well, what are we going to do? And at that point, we were just playing like indie rock stuff, stuff you yeah. hear at other bars by other bands here. And we were like, well, just gotta crank up the volume, <laughs> I guess. Which I think I remember what you said, like, for band, it was like, I think we need to get faster. Yeah. Heavier. Yeah. Exactly yeah. What she said. Yeah. And I was like, that's the only way the dream will survive. <laughs> like, <laughs> we can't do, you know, indie rock with us three. It's just so much better to be that much faster. I don't know. It's it's, it's exciting. It's yeah. kinetic. How often do you practice per week? A lot. It takes yeah. up a lot of time. We'll do like Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, maybe a Friday or Saturday yeah. here yeah. and there. Especially the week of a show. So yeah, especially the week of a show. And then that's just like band us all three together. Then we all have to practice kind of on our own, like learning parts. Too. I'd say I'd say we get together twice a week. Okay. And then the amount of hours that each one of us puts into like learning their parts, probably less than it should be, but probably. <laughs> Yeah. more time that we should be devoting to something else with our lives, yeah. something productive. <laughs> um, yeah. Neat. Awesome. Um, how are most of your songs produced? Do you usually write them on your own? Is there like a single songwriter that you do? Or is it primarily um, a lot of like covers or? It's mainly covers. We, we, we all have, we're all cooking up stuff, mm -hmm. Oxford. Yeah. Please, please know, we're cooking stuff up. But a great part about like being in a punk band, I think, or any really garage band of instruments is 
it's like a uh, common art that we all share as like Americans and musicians and people. So you can just, hey, this is a long explanation for you can just steal songs and no one cares. Um, <laughs> you can rip off your favorite artists and it's good. But we've all been writing stuff and coming to each other and going, I think, I think this part I did is really cool if you want to check it out. Yeah. And then we never talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> What has been your favorite concert so far that you have performed? Where was it and why was it your favorite concert? This past Saturday in Columbus, we played at a venue called Half Bait. It was probably the best one yet. Really? I think it was, I think a huge part was that it was at cool lights. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think I playing think, with yeah. like regular yellow lights doesn't look too good. We, you know, we went to Columbus, went to a bigger city, bigger market, better lights, it felt great. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think the best part about it for me was that uh, people were like, had to like shove each other out of the way to get to the bar. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The room and everything it was, was like, packed. yeah, it was yeah, packed. Yeah. It's a good problem. Nice yeah. and like grungy kind of vibe. Going yeah. on. But I think if you asked us before this week, we would have said the show at the beginning of February. Yeah. It's, our answer kind yeah. of just changes depending mm -hmm. on whichever the last it's show was. Yeah. So you're growing overall. Yeah. yeah. And like each we're just trying, crazy to, now. We're trying to get, that, get our fix. Falling, like, cool. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Falling upward. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Last question here. Is there anything new that we should be expecting from Pal Jack soon? Any new songs, any new albums, or new shows? We're, we're kind of always cooking. We're always kind of <laughs> tossing new stuff, new art, new logos, just at the wall, seeing what sticks. I think the best part about it is kind of how we just kind of go with the flow mm -hmm. and just kind of come up with new stuff on the fly. It's always, always fresh, always yeah. new. We're not doing the same thing every show. Uh, I think that's what keeps it interesting. Yeah. We, we've always got shows planned for like the next immediate two weeks and then those periods pass, so then we're trying to book more and more and more. So if you're just in Oxford this spring, take a look out for us. I'm sure you'll hear us before you see us, so. True. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely be on the lookout for Palachek in the future, like he was saying. Um, but that's all the questions that I have for you guys. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to be here for this interview. I had a great time, and I hope you guys had a good time as well. I did. Make sure to check out Palachek's page at underscore palette underscore jack underscore on Instagram and to stay up to date with their newest announcements and concerts. And as always, be sure to check out MTN's Instagram page at MiamiMTN to stay up to date with the latest campus news. Celebrate International Women's Day on Thursday, March 7th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. with the Global Initiatives and International Student and Scholar Services. Head to the Heritage Room at Shriver Center to appreciate global achievements made by women and support the gender equality movement. International Women's Day is celebrated on March 8th. The new Richard M. McVeigh Data Science Building is home to the Cutting Edge XR Stage, where students can develop and showcase immersive software experiences. MTN members Mackenzie Noor and Cordelia Stubblefeld, Stubblefield meet, met with Director of Immersive Lab and XR Stage, Benjamin Nicholson, to find out more. So what you're seeing around here is um, basically like a next generation production studio. So if you go to Hollywood right now, and you would step into Industrial Light and Magic or any of the Marvel movies or some of the episodic television shows that are out there, you'd step into a LED volume, which is what's behind me. And um, in those stages, they have track cameras which allow us to overlay a virtual environment, meaning out of Unreal Engine or Touch Designer or um, a program called Notch with the real environment so we can mix background sets, um, uh, augmented reality overlays, and also just general graphics that we can shoot film and video into. And Within this space, it's data analytics um, and computer science and ETVD. And so the idea is we slam all these people together that have to do um, high-end computing and see how they sort of fit together and the students flow together. Um, and also this space is really meant to be centric to creative school creative arts here at Miami because ETVD, I don't know, many people don't know that we're part of CCA. 
So just like theater, just like dance, just like uh, opera, we are in that umbrella of fine art painting. If you were to go to another university, let's say like USC or UCLA or SCAD down in South Carolina, they have things that are similar. The point of view that we have here is we really want students not just to be operators or to learn how to use the camera. We want them to understand how the LED panels are hooked up, how these computers talk to each other, how networking works, how um, to fix problems. And so we call, in our world, it's called a creative technologist, so somebody who uses technology to solve creative problems. So we want them out on crews listening to creative directors or directors and then also speaking to really highly technical people and sort of bridging these two worlds together. Students get into the studio by basically being qualified. We do some open lab hours in here that we just started getting our feet underneath us. So students will be in here from like 6 to 10 p.m. They'd love to see students, other students stop by and um, express interest. We have some trainings that we ask for people to do before they actually start touching the equipment. But they're always welcome to come by and poke their head in. Thank you for tuning in to Miami Television News. I'm Andy. And I'm Andrew. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at MiamiMTN. Traverse.